Okay, so I was just checking out this tank back here. I was actually admiring it because uh, the, the crypts are growing in very nicely. And I thought to myself, have I not done a crypt video yet? Well, here's your crypt video. Well, welcome to the Smallscape. Yes, it is time for a crypt video. It is such a great plant. You can ask beginners, intermediates, advanced, and I think they will all agree. It's kind of like the Anubias. It's just a great standard plant that everybody loves. I did do a video on Crips versus Anubias. I can link that down below, but I didn't follow it up with a special all about Crips video. So here it is. Okay, so the first thing that you need is low light. That's really cool because all the basic plants, the, the, the beginner plants that I usually talk about require low light. I don't use CO2 and I don't use highlight. I, at least not at this point. Uh, at some point I might, but I really like keeping things simple, easy to maintain, and really user-friendly. So this is a great plant for that because any, say if you get a kit tank and it comes with a standard light, you're good. You are good to go. Your crypt will be very, very happy. So low light, nothing, nothing fancy, nothing special, and your crypt will be a happy little camper. The second thing that you need with crypts, and this is an absolute must, is root taps. If you plant your plants you have in your tank for your substrate, anything like gravel, sand, anything inert like that that has no fertilizers, any nutrients in it, you need to add it. So I've done videos before how you can make your own root tabs using stuff from the garden center. I can link that down below. Or you just buy root tabs. They're just really great, really easy. You just bury them into the substrate, especially right around the roots. They're gonna be really, really happy. An absolute must to fertilize your substrate with crypts. The next thing that you will need is, well, you're gonna to need to leave them alone. Crypts don't like to be moved around. They they really don't. They, they like, you plant them, you leave them, and it will actually, they'll make more. They, they grow via runners, which is really cool if you want crypts to take up your tank, and especially if you have larger tanks. We actually planted some crypts in our 50 gallon low boy years ago. And we didn't have that many that we planted in there. It looked really nice when it started, oh, so beautiful. And then in no time at all, well, in, in, in a while, cause they don't grow that fast, but we never added any. And now we have tons in there. I've actually removed some from there and used them elsewhere, but really great. They're not a fast grower, but they're a really, really great plant that will fill up your tanks. The next thing that you're gonna need to keep in mind is not only do you need to leave them alone, but when you are maybe replanting them, when you first get them, sometimes I get mine from uh, online. Flip Aquatics has them. He's an, uh, a channel sponsor to our main channel. You can get them uh, PetSmart. I've gotten them from PetSmart as little babies. Really great, but be very gentle with them because where the stem meets the bottom, the base of the plant, they can break off very, very easily. They'll regrow other leaves, it'll be, it'll be fine, but just keep in mind to be very gentle when you're planting these. And then the last thing that I think and you need to know when you have crypts is, well, you need patience because, and this is the quirky thing with crypts, when you move them, when you replant them, they will do something that is called melt melting. It's they, they literally look like the leaves are melting. Maybe some of them will melt, all of them will melt, but it'll kind of create a little bit of a mess. You'll have to remove the kind of gooey looking leaves. And then the, the good news is that they will regenerate new leaves. They just get stressed out. They say, leaves are gone, and then they just make some new leaves. So it, it is okay, but you just need to be prepared for it. Now, if you don't want to see, this is a little, a fun tip for you. If, and this is, another reason that you're gonna need patience is if you don't wanna see your leaves melting or have to clean it up, uh, cut the leaves off. Before you plant it, cut the leaves off towards the bottom and they won't melt because the leaves will not be there, but they will regenerate new leaves. It's just, you won't see them for a while until they actually do produce more leaves. So the question is, are they good for nano tanks? 
Yes and no. When you say nano tanks, a lot of people generally say they'll they'll agree that a nano tank is anything 20 gallons and lower. Yes, that's true. I actually think there are different sizes within that. You have small nano tanks, like medium average nano tanks, and then large nano tanks. You can even have some micro nano tanks too. But the large ones, the 10 and 20 gallons, I would say those would be the large nano tanks. Crypts are great. They will fill it up. Uh, they'll, like I said, they'll create more crypts throughout the tank. So you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck just with planting one crypt. Really great. And eventually you will probably be able to split different crypts from the, the main part of the, kind of like the rosette shape of the center of the plant. Really, really cool. Now the medium, what I would call, and you'll, you probably won't hear this anywhere else because I, I just, I made it up. So since I'm all about nano tanks, I just, I just made it up. Medium tanks, medium nano tanks, I would say would be anywhere from the five, like the five to eight gallon range. I would say that's kind of like an average. I'm going to the store getting a nano tank. That's what you're going to be looking at. I, I feel that uh, crypt would be a great choice for the medium nano tank. It'll do great. It'll actually fill up a nice space without totally overtaking your plant. But we're kind of getting into the range of a special crypt that I think is really great for your smaller nano tanks, and that's the crypt parva. It's actually one of my all-time favorite plants, and I don't find this one to melt, and they're, they stay a lot smaller. Really cute. I have them in some of my tiniest nano tanks, my three-gallon bookshelf tank. I've got it in there, and uh, it works out great. So if you do have some of the smaller nano tanks, say something less than a five-gallon definitely check out Crypt Parva because it's a really, really cute and uh, a very user-friendly plant. Now briefly, their water requirements, they're really very user-friendly for the temperatures. I would say like low, maybe like 70 to low 80s, they do really great. And then pH, low six, maybe six to seven, 7.4 or so like that, that should do really great. So. It actually does well in a variety of different water temperatures and uh, situations. Okay, so there is your video on Crips. Let me know what is your luck been with Crips? Do you really love them? Do you hate them? Uh, is there a particular kind that it's your absolute favorite? Uh, do you like the Wendettis? Do you like the ones that are like the bronze and the red? That kind of adds a nice color to the tank. Or are you like me and you like really tiny ones like the Crip Parva? But let me know and hopefully you like the video and I will see you next time.